Central Park is a stable of New York City life for both residents and millions of visitors from around the world. But what was there before the beloved green space existed just may surprise you. Back in the 1800s, from 1825 to 1857, more than 200 people called it home. Seneca Village, chances are you've never heard of it. This flourishing African-American settlement was right in the middle of modern day Central Park, home to a vibrant group of black property owners. And over the past few decades, historians, New Yorkers and Seneca descendants have started preserving and sharing this once forgotten story like Diane Jones Randall. I grew up with a father who was very interested in history. Diane is the daughter of the late Cal Jones, a passionate historian who devoted much of his life to uncovering and sharing the story of Seneca Village. One of the things that was important to him was understanding where we all came from. There was this population of African-American working class people who were the first significant group of homeowners, of property owners in New York in the mid 1800s. And it's so hard to believe that it was right here where we are in Central Park. They built homes, they built schools, they built churches, and they built their own finances. And they were able to do it at a time when that was not an easy thing for black people. And it's a beautiful story when you hear of it, but it's also a sad story because I want to ask the question, okay, what happened? The city utilized the power of eminent domain and decided this is where Central Park is going to be. So it was a story of the removal of a population of people who had established homes. And that story has happened in other places. Eminent domain refers to the power of a government to take private land for public use. The practice has often resulted in the displacement of marginalized communities. Another example of this is Bruce's Beach in Southern California. This is only the first step in our fight for justice for Charles and Willa Bruce and their descendants. In the 1920s, the city seized that land from the Bruce family using the power of eminent domain. In a very rare turn of events, in 2021, the city restored the land to the descendants of the family, land that is worth millions today. Are people ever shocked? when they hear this story. Central Park has a singular story. It's like you sort of talk about Central Park, you don't think about the street grid, you don't think about the people who lived there before. You're experiencing the now moment. I think that's the sad thing about black history is everybody sees it at this point of negative interaction. And there was that, but there's also this history of what we did carve out in our lives here and how we contributed. And we're not willing to look at the bright side. We can't really understand what was lost. So when African-Americans left Seneca Village, where did they go? A lot of different places. As the director of community outreach projects, John Reddick is working to protect and spread the story of Seneca Village. It sounds like a huge project just to try and collect artifacts and sort of like, you know, go back and sort of well, lay out. I mean, the challenge for us is like to, to evoke what those lives must have been like. And you understand the joy of what was there. Today, the site of records of Seneca Village provide a wealth of information for those eager to learn about the past. But the truth remains that a thriving community was disbanded to create public space. Now, Diane, John, and others are focused on continuing to tell the story of this uniquely preserved piece of American history. Do you feel like you have a responsibility to continue your father's work? I do, I do. I hear his voice on every street block that I walk. And I truly think that his legacy was teaching us that our legacies are important. I'm ready to go out there and continue working and encouraging people to understand their history because that that is who we are. Uh, and this story is so important on so many levels. I mean, so many people here in the tri-state know about it, but very few across the country mm -hmm. have ever heard of this story here. Yeah, Central Park, it's prime real estate. Yeah, it is prime real estate. And our many thanks to Haley, who produced this piece. And our thanks to Diane Jones-Randall and John Reddick for sitting down with me and to the folks over at Central Park for sharing that story with us. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.